one of the questions that I actually had, which then was asked by two different people as well, um, was about drums. Um, I know you got live drums set up. You guys are recording some live drums. How much is it actually a live drum part? How much is it samples? Are you doing different pieces of things, different songs? I'm, I'm just always, you know, someone who came from playing in bands and recording drums and doing all that, figuring out how to take, create live elements. There was also a question about liveness of records, but can you talk about drums generally? How did you guys, yeah. that? how did you think about that? How'd you put those things together? Um, I mean, so across the record as a whole, it's all live it's all live drums somewhere in there and then of course samples being layered in or um like on this top first song of the record i could talk about like sushi and as it was is kind of two different things and then um yeah. and then like for something like late night talking on there like that was just tom playing from the top down and any mistakes were just punched and that's it's full drum take you can look at it it's you know he did a couple of takes i think there was some comping um, and just like that was it. And then and that's that song has that feel. So it's a little bit more live feeling has that kind of feel to it. And it's, it's like a multi drums. multi mic setup. You got like multi mics. Yeah, we were at Shangri La. Jeremy must have put 12 mics on the, you know, it really went to town on kind of a classic rock kind of drum mic setup. But we would still then curate the mics that sounded the best. Um, turn this up, is Shangri La, you know. the, the, the Rick Rubin studio in Malibu. Yeah turn up the mics yep. it's out of the best to suit the thing and watching him do that but so something like late night talking was very much tom like that's like tom playing the whole thing to himself he's like one man band kind of like all right now i'm gonna jump on bass something like sushi was very interesting so uh um mitch roland had that um bass line and uh and he started playing just the basic drum beat and i would just was like already we're just back to this we're no too normal now and i found this drum machine loop that uh a uh producer friend of mine had kind of given me doug showalter and um and i put it in ableton and retimed it and it's got this like slushy kind of sound and and i really liked how that with the bass line swung the whole thing and, and was abnormal and the kicks were abnormal so that was like an example of how we would use like like drum loops and stuff from um you know or or drum samples but normally so the, so like the live the, drums was too were too straight basically like you usually think of like lives live drums are too straight and too normal so you use loops with weird warping and things yeah to there was like a interesting yeah because you know in the in the thing it's going like you know it's this like it's really this slushy like you know it's like the auditory thing of like drinking a slurpee or something it's like you can't there's like just so much like noise crackling there's not a lot of transient to it so it's kind of this like noise thing but it's still got yeah. some sort of head bob to it um versus yeah it's not like a drum loop it's more like almost like a texture that helped give the whole feel and then we just added like sample kick you know a um just like a cowbell and and then and then Mitch played hi live hi hats like so that's all um, the kind of the live drums were just the hi hats, um, and then for as it was that was a really good one of like you hear in the drum beat we're like searching for the song searching for the song and Tom's playing a bunch of different things I'm kind of playing the keys and stuff and Harry's singing and 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 um, what it ended up being was like Tom found the drum beat but like recorded kick individually snare individually hi-hats individually and and but the whole pat but we mapped it to the pattern of his live kind of performance you know uh, like so so he played a live stuff, he played a yes. live thing first and then you went back and was like K -k -k -k. yeah yep so it was a variation so it, was kinda, it wasn't like you took one and then chopped it he actually played we, oh no he literally just played one and then just he played one chopped it around but it was but all the fills which there's not that many but still that came from like a uh, thing and 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 i think and that was interesting because that was like just like in a house and and it was like those we thought were kind of like those were the hardest we had to work for drum tones doodle just like it was a very boxy room and we were just like these drum tones suck and so yeah <laughs> and so that's why we ended up having to do like one like kick individually snare individually hi-hat individually layer samples in like everything because just the kit on its own unlike late night talking with just the kid on its own it was like wow sounds great but yeah. here is like 
these suck so much, but it ended up being very charming to me. Like when I hear those drums on that record, I'm like, these are charming sounding. They have like a uniqueness to them that is like yeah. not quite that Lin drum thing, but not quite that live drum thing. It's like in the middle somewhere. Cause we were kind of, you know, chasing like a Phoenixy, uh, MGMT kind of drums. Wolfgang, and I think they do. Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix, the most underrated, yeah. uh, album for producers for the last like 20 years. It's so good. It's, it's so, so good. good. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, all of this content is free. There's no secret knowledge here. There's no Patreon. We don't read ads. We don't have sponsors. We're just trying to build a knowledge base. All that we ask in return is that you share it with somebody. Thanks so much.